What's up, my friends? We're going to evaluate the integral of x squared minus 1 divided by ln x from 0 to 1. And it's going to be awesome because we're going to do it using the Feynman way or the Feynman trick, the Feynman method. And we'll use it to solve this complicated integral. And you can use it to solve other complicated integrals as well. So first part of the trick is to introduce a parameter, some variable. And we're going to call it t other than x. So we're going to insert it in here. And this is one of the, the kind of the trickiest part is when where do you introduce the parameter? You can check out some of my other videos where I've introduced it in a different way. But here, rather than having a 2, I call 2 a t, where t can be any real number. Now, bear with me. As we go through it, you'll see why we did this. Now, with the t here, what we want is g of 2, because t is 2, and that's our integral right here. Now, we don't know how to do the integral but we do know how to take the derivative. And we're gonna take the derivative with respect to t of this integral. And there's this pretty sweet trick that allows us to literally just bring the derivative inside the integral rule, inside the integral. And it's called the Leibniz integral rule. There are some conditions attacked attached, but those conditions are pretty mild. Uh, if it's not a pathological function, you can generally do it, but check out my derivation and the conditions that allow us to do that. So we bring it inside, it becomes a partial derivative, and this partial derivative is not too bad because ln x just comes out because it's the derivative with respect to t. And this, my friends, this isn't a power rule derivative because we're taking the derivative with respect to t. The derivative is ln x, x to the t. If you want to see how I did this derivative, I can put it in the comments if you want to see it. This is like a, a calc 1 derivative here. And my friends, this is the whole point. One of the reasons why we did the derivative was because ln x, after we do the derivative, this ln x here cancels out with the ln x in the denominator, and we're left with this super easy integral that we could just use, use the reverse power rule. And after we do that, we'll plug in our limits. And my friends, we've done an integral. <laughs> now, it's not the integral we want yet, right? This integral gave us g prime of t. We want g of t. So to get g of t, or g of 2 really is what we want, we want to integrate g prime of t. And again, this is part of the trick. So we introduced some parameter, took the derivative of that integrand, that allows us to, that simplifies to an easier integral, but now we have to do another integral. So we traded a harder integral with two easier ones right here. Now, this part we can plug in, but if we do the integral right now, we'll get this annoying integration constant. So we're going to plug in some limits. We're going to go from a, which a can be any number we want, to 2. And this g of 2, this is the answer to our integral right here. So we'll take the integral of the left-hand side. That's our friend, ln t plus 1. Uh, g2 we want, and this annoying g of a is what we have to figure out. Now, if we can put in any number, let's choose a to be 0. Because if a is 0, then we plug in 0 for t right here. That's ln of 1. ln of 1 is 0. So if ln of 1 is 0, then g of a is, is 0, if a is 0. So that's cool. So that means g2 is going to be ln of t plus 1. This is all evaluated from 0 to 2, minus, minus 0 right here. And therefore, g2 equals ln of 3, if we plug in 2 for 3. And my friends, that's our integral in all its glory. It's pretty sweet. Check out my harder version of this one. If you haven't yet, you definitely, definitely, definitely should. The more integrals you do, the better you'll get. I know they're not easy. They were very, very tough for me when I first learned. But the more you do, the better you'll get. You can survive. Hang in there. Cheers.